So to get into the CAMAC hub, uh, you can go to home.camac.com and uh, that will allow it to be found on the network and then you can give it a name and log into the device. I'm, I'm not gonna go into all the details right now about, about what that looks like and setting that up, um, but I, I, I can do that after the end of the presentation. Um, as a pro user, um, let's say you had hundreds of accounts. We have customers that literally have hundreds of accounts. And if you had to scroll through each one, one at a time to find it, because you can manage your accounts right from home.camac.com. And the key is you're gonna wanna use um, an, a, an email address that you set up as a company to commission all of your hubs. That way you have access to all of them and you can manage your customers needs whether they want to add cameras whether they want to turn a camera on and off or change what that camera is looking for so i'm showing a smaller version of that here where i've got one common account that i've used to log into and i have four different hubs and these are in different locations i'm going to log into one here it's called doug's house we're showing multiple cameras um, these cameras are different manufacturers as well and camac can see all of them Let's go in to the gear setting and we'll get right into some of the pro features. So a customer that might have this hub that wasn't set up by a Camac Pro is gonna have some limited capability when it comes to these extra features. So that's what we're here to expose today. Under the hub settings, and the hub settings are nice because you can go through and set all of these settings within the hub settings, and then maybe you have 12 cameras that are connected to the hub, and you simply can click on one box that says, just use the hub settings. Then you don't have to go through each camera to set up each camera, what you want it to see. If they're all looking for people and trucks and you know all of those things, and they're not looking for things like spiders and spider webs and squirrels, um, they all can be set up the same. It's very simple to do. right here to enable the RTSP server. If you're using third-party monitoring, you're gonna to wanna to have this enabled. And uh, we have the ability to share data. Now companies like Emix, which is a third-party monitoring company, we have two-way support for them. So um, they can do talk down uh, from their monitoring station to the CAMAC hub. You can do listen back. So under the basic tab of our hub settings, we do have an enable RTSP option here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is set. Now, by default, it is 554, and you obviously can change that um, to whatever you want. We have options here for using the secure RT, uh, RTSP. Um, probably isn't going to be utilized by um, most companies, but if they require encryption, maybe a government project or something like that, uh, you'd have the ability to um, have that encrypted as well. We do have a show advanced option tab here at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down so you can see that. The boxes that are checked, those do come with a standard uh, CAMAC hub. And when I say standard, the hubs uh, are the same hardware. But as a pro, your email address, once registered with us, will allow these extra options to be exposed when you connect that hub. So um, once you've done that and said, hey, this is going to be our pro account, um, you'll start seeing those features will show up automatically uh, without having to notify us each time. But the one that I did want to show is to scan your local network, um, find cameras and file servers. Maybe you have a NAS server or something like that that's on your network um, to be able to go out and search and find those devices. Now, with a standard CAMEC user that might have this hub not set up by a pro, when they plug it in, we're just going to scan the network and go out and look for cameras. They're all going to pop up. Well, imagine you've got a, a building and maybe you've got 50 employees and they all have a Frankenstein desk of cameras all over their desk. Um, and you're trying to plug a hub and you don't want it necessarily going out and finding all those cameras. So you have the ability to turn that off. Um, also turning this off will prevent a customer from just plugging a camera in and CAMIC finds it automatically outside of your control. So if you wanna be able to set it up and make sure they have a good experience, um, you have that option to be able to turn that on and off. Um, also, we can go out and look up to 15 different subnets. And this is pretty cool. 
if the CAMEC is on the incoming network, so you've got a, a modem and a router and you've connected your CAMEC hub to it, um, and for whatever reason, somebody has split off and they, they put another um, Wi-Fi router and then that had a router plugged into it. And these are all different subnets and there's cameras on them. Um, instead of keeping them all on the same network, CAMEC can go out and sort of spider that and, and associate with 15 different subnets. Now, if you're at the end of the line, um, you can't associate back up, but you can go the other way. So it's really helpful when it comes to trying to figure out somebody's network and what they did. For the most part, if you get the CAMEC hub installed on the front end, we'll be able to go out and spider and find um, devices all throughout that network. So those are the, um, the hub settings. I'll just quickly show here under devices, we have the ability to add cameras and you simply can just click add if you don't want it to go out and find them automatically. Um, you can do the stream URL. And we have different camera manufacturers that are here. This by any means doesn't limit the amount of cameras that we support, um, but a lot of these you'll probably notice like Foscam. Foscam makes cameras for a bunch of different companies. So we put the category of, of these manufacturers that uh, are in here, uh, Hikvision, uh, Dawa, those type of things. There's a lot of uh, OEM branding that comes with that. I'll quickly show you under users, setting up a user account, and this is the owner of the hub. Um, if you set up a customer and you put in their credentials and give them administrative access, what'll happen is after one hour, you're gonna, you're gonna lose the camera viewing capability. And we do that for security purposes and to give the customer the peace of mind that, okay, they can see the fact that you don't have access to it. Now they can grant you access if you need to go in and work on the system. They can simply click in here and they can go and, and change the date or edit whatever they want. So just be cautious of, giving a customer admin access because it'll, it'll handshake it off um, to them and you still have access locally to the system, um, but you won't be able to view camera alerts. All right, the alerts tab. Uh, this is the one that's got the most options here, dealer options. Now notice this, if I just uncheck alerts, it pretty much truncates everything. So, when you're in your hub settings without this checked, uh, you may look and go, I, I don't really see where to do any of this. Well, you simply click on this box. Now it opens up a whole world of options for us. Um, I also wanna differentiate between um, something that we're recording as an event uh, or a rated event versus an alert. An alert is something that goes out to your phone. We're recording events and things all the time that CAMEX sees that may be interesting or uninteresting, um, but we still record them. So if somebody's been mowing the lawn and going back and forth and those start becoming suppressed, we're still recording those events and they can are searchable. We're not sending you emails so that we, we call those alerts. Um, and so I could turn off alerts, but I could still detect objects and have those recorded in the CAMEX hub. Okay, the first thing is auto suppression. So I can uh, say I don't want to auto suppress similar uh, people or vehicles. Now, if I've got a facility where traffic is coming in during a period of time, all the time, um, I might want that auto suppressed. There's another option where maybe I wanna see all the vehicles that are coming in. Every time a, a vehicle comes in, it means somebody's gotta go to the loading dock and maybe we wanna use it not so much for monitoring purposes for security, but for just the fact that uh, maybe somebody's gonna get a text message. They're in the lunchroom, um, boom, vehicle comes in, they know they gotta to go to the loading dock. So you do have the ability to leave that on or turn it off. Um, but whether they're suppressed or not, we're still recording them. The suppression goes to whether they're being sent out as an actual alert. Um, enable long distance mode. So this is uh, a cool feature. If you've got cameras that in the, in, the, in the sort of the close proximity, when you just look at the camera without squinting your eyes, looking for things way in the background, um, you don't see a lot of motion. 
but maybe a hundred yards in the background, there's a bunch of people walking back and forth and there's a lot of activity. If you do long distance mode, what happens is we will, we'll go down and look at a, a smaller pixel footprint and um, those will then become alerts. We're looking for people in the same sort of thing, but we're looking at something that may normally be way outside the range of what you're concerned about. Um, if you're doing a large parking lot, you may want to see all of that. Somebody around the periphery of the parking lot out back, yeah, I want to be alerted for that. Somebody who you're setting up for their front yard might say, look, I don't care about the neighbors walking out their side gate. Even though I'm looking at all of that, I don't need to see that far, um, you know, five, five doors down or, or half a block down. One thing that does happen, though, is you may have perfectly fine, you got 12 cameras, um, you're viewing everything great. Uh, you use long distance mode and we are going to take a tight scrutiny and look at all of those pixels now. And it does take some resources for that. So you might find that um, we have a 24 megapixel count that we try to shoot at for as a goal. We've had people go higher if the cameras don't have a lot of traffic. But if you're, if you're seeing a lot of activity on your cameras, 24 megapixel is about our, uh, that's our guideline of where we'd like to see people at that or less. Um, but when you click on this, it's going to really start bringing in a lot more data for us to process. And maybe you had 12 cameras that working great. You might find that um, you don't need that feature on all of your cameras. So you have the ability to go into an individual camera and turn it off. And I'll show you once I finish the hub settings. This is or once I finish this, because if I enable this and I click hub settings on all my cameras, well, then this feature is going to be enabled. So I'll show you how you can do it just on cameras that it may uh, specifically apply to. These are different monitoring companies um, that we support. Um, and if you go into any one of them and click on it, you've got the ability to edit the information that is required, account ID, server address. You can uh, add time constraints also on when you want the monitoring to be in, in effect. One nice thing about Camec is, um, if, if you're paying for the amount of views that somebody at a monitoring station has to um, look at, CAMEC is going to significantly reduce those amount of views. So you're only going to get the meaningful alerts, not a lot of clip noise and rain that might be setting off uh, alerts uh, or, or things blowing in the background or a flag. Um, so it's going to save uh, a lot of time and money from just monitoring uh, fees. So all of these have that capability. You might say, well, uh, I wanna set up my hub settings to MX, but I have one camera that's gonna go to stages. Um, maybe you've got a camera set up that points at another area and somebody else happens to have a stages account and you're doing them a favor and monitoring their side door. Um, so uh, th that can be done. And I'll show you uh, on the individual camera settings. And we got the uh, send alerts. Um, if cameras go offline, you can set how much time that's for. That's a standard uh, option that we have here. Under the Me tab, I can go through, and if I have chosen to use hub settings on all my cameras, I simply can say, hey, I want to snooze them for an hour or three hours or a day. Maybe somebody's going to be working on the system and you want to snooze it. This does not snooze the alerts going to a third party monitoring company, but it will stop the alerts that are being sent to somebody's phone um, at the, uh, you know, whatever site that you're uh, at. All right, let's go into an individual camera now and we'll go to those settings. So here it's the wrench icon. Now, once I click on it, you may look at it and go, well, this looks exactly like we were in before, except we're in the camera settings now and see where it says use hub settings. This is everything I set up on that basic page. If I click this box, then that's going to go into account. If I undo it, I have the ability here to make those changes myself. Maybe I say, well, this camera, I don't want to record audio. And I can turn that off. All right, let's go into alerts. Here you can see if I use hub settings, everything is grayed out. I don't have an option to change anything because the hub settings are taking over. And I've already done that in the hub. If I uncheck the box on just this one camera, now I can go in and say, well, I want to record alerts, but I don't need to have them, uh, you know, maybe emailed 
Um, I can put time constraints on when I want that to happen. Um, here's where I could say, yeah, in this case, don't auto suppress for this particular camera. Um, and it's exactly what we just went through, except it's now for this individual camera. It can take on its own properties. We have the option for voice alerts. This is not a pro feature, but something you might be interested in. Um, Camec will announce whatever you called the camera. So um, there's people who've been creative and have said, um, you know, call that camera, get away from the cars. And then it'll say, you know, hey, camera, uh, Camec saw, get away from the cars. Um, it'll announce it over a Google Chromecast device. We also have a speaker output. If you want to use the speaker output, you simply can click on it. You can add your time constraints. Um, and uh, so that's handy. If you want to send alerts by way of email or through an app, then you check this box. And now this is where you can say, yeah, but I don't want them after 11 o'clock at night um, and set constraints to it. So it's quite capable as far as doing, uh, you know, manipulating the times and when you're looking at stuff. One thing you don't see on the hub page and you do see here on the camera settings are whenever an alert has happened. So I get something on my iPhone, I go into the Camac and I'm, I'm looking at the event. I can actually rate that event and it helps the AI learn. So if you see something that it's like, no, I didn't want to see that. You simply can click a thumbs down and it will create a rating. And here you see we have a thumbs up, but um, going in and editing that, I could change it to a thumbs down and say, I, I don't want to see deer anymore, as opposed to, I do want to see deer that occur in a certain area. And so in, in this case, on this camera uh, down here, I'll go full screen. It's in a different location too. This one's in Duluth, Minnesota. I'm primarily looking for deer. so. That's all, that's all the camera looks for. And I'm gonna get alerts for that. Obviously in this case, I can go through and scroll through, I mean, multiple times a day there's deer and I might have deer in there, but I don't wanna see them all the time. I could say, you know, these are less interesting to me. I wanna search them, but I don't want alerts coming through for them. So you can just give it a thumbs down. You see a deer, give it a thumbs down and you've rated it to say, yeah, I'm not looking for that. Doesn't mean we're not keeping it as an event and that we're not recording it. Um, it, uh, it just means that you're not going to be getting them sent to your phone. Let me close here by showing you one other thing, not a pro feature, but a nice feature to know about if you're not familiar with it. If you click the bell icon up here, when you're on the, the main page, you can go in and filter what you're looking for. Like if I'm only looking at it for the living room camera, and I'm looking at interesting alerts and I wanna search specifically for deer. So now that's all I'm gonna get is events and I can go by day and pull those events in. It's gonna show me where they are, put a box around it for me so it's easy to see, kind of like your own monitoring company. You can take a snapshot of it. Um, you can actually click here, and this is a, an easy way to go through and just search events. Say, okay, I'm looking for what time of day that the, you know, there was a deer when we had a vehicle because somebody hit, hit a deer or whatever. Um, and you can then just click on the play button. It'll go to right to that event. It'll play it um, in real time based on our recording. And you'll notice down here, it's already got brackets on it and it's cropped out down at the bottom. There's a green bracket and a blue bracket it has already cropped this out. And now I can share this video or I can download it and share it with police. So not a pro feature yet. I thought it was uh, just interesting if those of you who haven't played with that yet. So I think it's probably a good time to um, transition between uh, going over the pro features here to see if anybody has any questions. Um, and then if there's anybody who's not familiar with just sort of the basic setup and setting alerts, I can take a little bit of time after that and go through and show you what that looks like. In the chat box, you'll, um, uh, you'll see we've got the email address up there, business at 
camac.com. And that's where you can shoot all of your questions related to um, billing, any other. So one question was um, any IO inputs? Not currently. Um, we do have our partner uh, in a distributor in England actually has pretty close to releasing um, an option uh, using our, our GitHub API. Um, there is a way to do that without having to, um, you know, sort of write your own code. I'll give you a cliff note version of it. I, I teach a home automation class as well and um, at a community college and we use CAMEC in one of our exercises where I have the, the students uh, trigger an output uh, to turn a light red if it sees a deer or a bear. And that can be done using some third-party products. A company called Universal Devices makes it an intelligent gateway. And there is a driver that Universal Devices uses for CAMEC. Now, if a CAMEC alert is seen all the way down to the specificity of the living room camera sees a bear, then I can trigger a series of home automation functions from arming an alarm system to turning lights on to uh, playing music. I mean, whatever it is. So those capabilities are there. Yeah, and, and so there is, I believe in uh, UK, uh, I'm hearing that we have an IO board plan to be available within the next two weeks or so. Um, so uh, for those of you based in uh, uh, Europe are, that are working with Dave, you can contact uh, uh, Dave uh, directly for that. Yeah, so that's what I was referring to. And I, I had contacted him also because I had some people that were interested in it. And it, yeah, it sounds like it's pretty quick um, when that would be available. Um, you could then use, if you were going to do alarm integration, you could you do a, a, a key switch zone on your alarm system and have the output board just do a momentary contact closure based on an alert and have it arm or disarm a system um, that way as well. So masking. Um, somebody had a question on masking. And uh, if you don't want to detect an object. So let me just show you quickly here. So if I go in and I want to play an alert, I'm clicking the bell icon. And I can scroll through all the alerts that it sees. And if I said, you know what, I don't want to see that anymore, I can click a thumbs down. And now it's going to say, OK, you want to see less things like this. And the, detect the detected objects are correct. However, show me less things that involve people. So if what you saw you don't want to see anymore, then that's good. Maybe you want to just say around a specific area in the image or a recur occurs around the same time of day. So you can check those options also. And when it said the same area in the image, we've already put a box around where we saw that event. If you look over to the right, you can see there's a box around it. And if I'm okay with that area, I simply can say, yeah, that's good. Or there's no reason I can't save it. And now I wanna go back and actually look at that, that rating. And this is where you can help shape the AI to be even more um, specific to what you're looking for in real uh, granular area. So here, right here, it happened at uh, uh, September 19th. Here's a rating. And here's that box. And I can expand on the box if I want. And in this case, I go back to the rating and it says, I want to see fewer things like this. So that's how I can exclude something. Or I click it up and it says, yeah, I want to see stuff that involves that. Now, let's say I don't have an alert to click on to go ahead and say, let CAMEC automatically determine where that, uh, that event was. I can go down here and say, I want to add a new rating. And now we're starting from scratch. Take note that the thumbs down is by default. So it says, you know, read what it says because changing this changes the whole complexity of the alert. 
we've had people that set up all the alerts and, and they're, they're masking out and all that and thought it was a positive alert looking for uh, uh, something in that area. And, and when they clicked on it, um, by default, it's a thumbs down showing me fewer things. Then you can go and choose your objects from the list of what you want to see. Uh, maybe I'm looking for cats. My cat's been missing um, and I want to see a cat or I don't want to see a cat. Maybe I have a lot of cats and I don't want to see them anymore. Um, and then that occur in a certain area on the image. All right. Okay. So I'm looking for cats that are, um, I don't know, maybe up here by the eagle and I can just create a, a masking. I'm clicking with my mouse and I'm just dragging. So there, the cat jumps up on here and gets within this range and starts clawing at the eagle, which is not likely. Um, I'm, I can get an alert for it or I'm not looking for that because the cats are always up here messing with the eagle. It, you just decide how you want that to be seen. Um, I could mask out the doorway and I'm only looking for somebody if they're right at the door or uh, I don't wanna see anybody at the door. So you kind of get the gist of it. You can choose of how you want to um, determine that object, whether you want it to be seen or don't want it to be seen. In any event, we are recording all of these. Um, go ahead and delete that but we record them all the time. So if I go back and I'm looking at the timeline here of an event um, and I can go, and you'll see the more I click on this, I'm going up in days, two weeks. These little hashes represent events and they're all the events, uninteresting events, things that I don't wanna see, but I'm still recording them as an, an event, um, events that I do want to see and suppressed events. All of that we record, even though we're recording full time. So in essence, we're always recording, but we're putting um, markers on those. So they're actual searchable events. Like I'd showed you before, um, if I go into filters and say, I'm only looking for suppressed alerts. And I wanna bring up any cameras to see, did I have anything that was suppressed and nothing, nothing pops up, so. I didn't have anything that met that threshold where enough of it was happening that it was auto suppressing. Um, I've got artificial grass. So anybody who's going to walk in the front yard, there's nobody mowing my front yard um, and people are just passing through. So I don't have that criteria, but if I did, I'd be able to search those as well. Um, so I, it looks like there was a comment related to, uh, to masking as far as it being manual, looking for it to be automatic. Well, you somewhat can do this if you've got an alert and you look and we've already masked it out. You simply can just do a thumbs up and now you've created a masking for that in that area. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Uh, but other than that, if you or, or if you said, I, I want to exclude things in that area. So you can go through and review alerts for a period of time and then just start rating them if you want. You don't have to. You can set them all up ahead of time. But this is our sort of version of letting it be somewhat automatic by looking at where Camex saw the event and then say, I don't want to see events like that anymore or I do want to see them. Uh, so there was a question about alerts being created for cameras on a uh, um, pan tilt control. Um, it would depend on how long you pause. If you're constantly scanning, um, there'd be, there's going to be some challenges in that. Um, though we do handle pan tilt control um, views pretty well. 
as far as being able to detect objects and and um, where something you know uh, we're panning uh, or the camera is panning and there's a vehicle in there, we're going to know that the vehicle's not moving, um, that your camera's moving. The one question was how many cameras can each hub support? You can add additional storage also. So you can put a NAS server on, show you here under the hub settings. If I go in to disk space, I can add a network drive if I want, different type formats, put in your information, the shared name. So if you have like a Synology, you'll put whatever nickname you gave the drive. Um, and then whatever your login credentials are. You also can plug in, we have a USB 3.0 jacks that are on the CAMEC hub and you can plug in an external drive onto that as well. And it will power up off that drive. If it's a big um, external drive, I'd probably recommend putting your own power supply on it instead of just pulling resources from our power supply. It's Even though it's pretty significant, it's around three amps um, uh, just for longevity and not having to tax the power supply with the CAMEC. If you've got a large uh, USB hard drive, um, you might want to consider just using the power supply that came with it. Uh, Andy, Andy, if you can um, hear me also, if you want to scan through any of the chats too and see if there's anything I missed. Um, sure. Uh, one, one more uh, one comment on the question about uh, camera support. Uh, right now we have a megapixel limit on the current uh, box. We, we, do, we are having some uh, early availability of systems that can support a higher megapixel limit. Right now our megapixel limit is 24 total megapixels. Of course, that can be um, worked around with substreaming. Um, are, for example, using multiple boxes on site if you want to get above that. Uh, but alternatively, we also ha are making available, we already have one device available in Europe um, that has up to 60 megapixels uh, support, and we are making it, uh, available another device here in the, on this side of the pond uh, that's going to be at, the, at that level or probably higher. So please uh, stay in touch with us over at business at Chemnect and we'll, if you're interested in those in those um, those systems. Yeah, one question about uh, you've got a Chemnect um, that is doesn't have the pro features. The email address that you use to set that up, that's where that's going to be what ties to that. So you need to let us know um, at business at Chemnect.com so we can set that up or um you'd have to log in under whatever business account that you have that has those features um that, that has already been turned on uh, in essence i dave had a comment i do agree as far as the when it comes to masking that if you've created a mask and and you're especially if you're trying to do it with your finger on a phone sometimes you'll get double masks that show up and then you want them to you, you want to push them out of the way so they're not you know um you don't see them because you click just outside of the box and it'd be great if there was an undo, just a right click and be able to go back so you can eliminate those. Currently, you have to just click the, the X on a rating. So if you're in any particular camera and you go into alerts and you were setting up an area And you meant you meant to stretch this, but you click just outside of it, and you see you create another box, and then you go back again, and you 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 know, or or you're outside, you keep trying to get it to just be able to right click and say undo. Um, I agree that would be great. Uh, otherwise, you just got to click the red X and then just do do a new rating and then re redraw it again. So um, I'll bring that up next time. Uh, a weekly meeting where we go over this kind of stuff. I'll bring it up as a, a feature.
anything else that uh, anybody has been, who's used the hub that had a question about, anything that I might be able to answer? There's uh, one question there from uh, Clewis there. It, uh, about, oh. yep. <clears throat> yeah, I, I had, I'd commented on that, that if he's got, um, he has a hub, that business at camac.com needs to know about the email address you used to set that up so it can have the pro features or if he already has an account that he's used for that then he'd have to use that to log into that hub as an administrator Um, comment, can you create alert tripwires? Um, probably should note specifically what you mean by that, but um, anybody want to provide any clarity? I mean, at this point, too, I don't care if somebody wants to unmute themselves and just... Uh, ask the question yeah that was uh myself john mclean that asked that but you know i'm thinking about this a little bit more um right now and i think uh it's probably an invalid question since uh you can create the alert zone anyways um and just to touch base on what i was uh um referring to before there are options out there if you've got a, a significant project that has to have some some real significant outside of the normal integration. Um, there are options that we can help you with using third party products and using our API. Um, I mean, I literally if if a truck drove up in my driveway, I could have it start a Tesla um, or I could have it start my pool pump um and only run for five minutes and turn it off now all of those may seem ridiculous why would i need to do that but um you know there are all of those hooks anybody familiar with some of the the third party sites like if uh, if this then that or stringify where you can take multiple companies products and string them together and use this cloud service to to connect it um, that capability is there, not directly with Camac, but Camac is a, a partner with companies that have the smart intelligent controller that can take the camera inputs as a real AI interface input into something that has extreme conditional logic and to build custom applications. I'm, I'm working on something for uh, uh, a friend of mine that has a property and he wants to do predator deterrent. So. I'm using CAMAC to scan the sort of horizon, multiple cameras, and look for things that are unknown animals um, uh, that don't have people with a dog. And so they have to, uh, the seismic sensing capability that I have in the ground has to match something that might be a bobcat or a mountain lion. Um, it's looking for something to break a physical paint, uh, plane with a photo beam. And then a water feature will go out and deter them away from the property. So, I mean, that's obviously just buying Camex not going to do all that, but Camex provides an inter integral uh, part of that solution by putting another level of, of safety feature in there. So, you know, the neighbor's cat just walking through the planter is not going to get hit with water. Um, so outside a little bit of the scope of what we were going to just talk about today, but um, I think it's important to know that there are a lot of cool capabilities that you can do using this AI. Um, you know, the ones that we've talked about for uh, limiting the amount of alerts, making them only meaningful. Uh, my wife loves it because we have cameras that are set all around the house that are looking just for our dog. And when we travel, she wants to get every alert of the dog. And he's a big dog, not, not, uh, he's not going to be super active when we're gone, but she can see, oh, he went outside. Oh, he's eating and not have to, you know, wonder because otherwise she wanted me to put like 20 cameras in the house so I could see him everywhere he was. Now she gets a timeline of that information, um, right to her phone.
Um, so one question from Dave was to be able to sort of bind multiple CAMEX to an account. Um, I, we can't do it so you can go into, let's say, one hub setting and have it apply across multiple CAMEX, but you can have them seen on the same um, the same login where you go to home.camac.com and um, they can all be seen on that page just like this. So if you had if you had one account um, and you were going to create separate Gmail accounts for maybe some commercial projects where I'll, all we want to see when we log in is are just those hubs. You could create a separate Gmail account that's just for that customer. And that's all you have access to. And then they're they're all listed here by, you know, area or whatever. But as far as that, that same configuration across multiple hubs, not currently, um, and one of the reasons, and I, I won't say maybe specifically by design, but we were looking at the fact that it probably doesn't make sense to have, when you're doing properties where you're going to go above 12 cameras, to uh, have a hub that does 200 cameras, even though you might have a project big enough. That creates a huge single point of failure for you. So actually having multiple hubs, you still get... Um, you get coverage and you're breaking it across you know multiple 12 cameras systems. so if something were to fail on one of them or somebody unplugs something you don't lose the whole system that may be a better way to look at it um it, you know in theory i like the idea of being able to go into one camic and have it change the configuration one thing i could do is from a third party integration standpoint is i could bring multiple CAMEX into that third party integration hub from universal devices that I was talking about. And then uh, those inputs could be part of whatever script I write for conditional logic saying, well, this camera from this hub and this one from this hub and this one have to trigger within five minutes of each other. And if that happens, then I wanna set off a, a contact closure or I wanna turn all the lights on in the building or you know, that kind of thing that we could do to put some synergy between all of them. Um, otherwise they would, they could all, they could all be sent to the same, uh, you know, phone. They could all come through as a, as a stream as if they're from the same unit, but they're going to be multiple uh, hubs and no way to sort of auto configure all. Of them. Okay, um, I'll give you a sort of a cliff note version on this of how to this we're in an MX account right now. And if I wanted to set this up, I'd go into setup. And then I want to add a site. And I've already added some some sites here, but let's say I want to add another one. We, I created a folder to put these in. And I can give it a site name. These are different names that I've used before. So let me just, use, I can type in one or I can just use one I've used before. And you can fill in the other information here. It, there's, there isn't a, um, an asterisk next to it. So it's not mandatory that you do that. And then I wanna go to next. I can upload a logo that might be associated with this particular integration. I can add notes about it. Um, uh, maybe you know where the CAMEC is located um, in case the technician needs to talk to somebody on site and they have no idea and they're like it's it's in the, the server room next to the bathroom on the first floor oh okay I know where that is um, and you could add some notes about it 
and then we want to add a device. And I want to show all. And then I want to look for CAMEC. And I can give it its own name if I want. I do need to port forward my CAMEC hub to port 443 and also 554 if that's what I'm using for the RTSP feed. Um, and I put the IP address in. I put port 443, um, username and password. And then I can just pull the configuration for the hub. And it will actually go out and pull all my cameras in for me and click done. I'm going to click done just to show you um, something that you need when you get all the way to the end where it says summary. And you don't need you could add individual cameras if you wanted after you went through and did that can that pull the configuration, but you could go back in again to that page and just re pull the configuration. And I'm just going to keep clicking all the way through. <laughs> and once I get to the summary page, the summary page is going to give me a site ID. In this case, 1179. And And then I would go in and set that up. Clicking on my gear icon. And then under alerts, if I'm using Imix, I would click on the box and that box is going to open up. And it would ask me for like an account ID or site ID, and I'd type that in that number. And now that associates this CAMEC hub with my with my Emix integration, and I'd fill in the rest of that information. So that's how it's done. If you've used Emix before, then the alerts come through, and you can monitor them and dismiss them, and you know like you normally would. But that's we can do a full class maybe on this at some point if there's a, a greater desire. But that's that's in essence all there is to it. Um, one other thing I, I realized that I didn't show, and this is under the basic tab, is show RSTP URLs. So when I click on this, it'll create URLs for cameras that you could put. This is what um, is getting pulled into Imix. Um, we do have a URL where it's just, you know, like uh, home.camic you'll take that out and put in your WAN address in place of that. But they could also be used for maybe a third party touchscreen that might be in the house and you want to have a camera view on it. Um, and if you've got the cameras running into CAMEC and you're like, well, how do I pull just that feed, that view off? We, we do create um, RTSP feeds, just like a NVR would, that could be used for some third party applications as well. Um, port 40 is not required in general. We use WebRTC, so you don't have to do any port forwarding. That's what's nice about being able to go into a customer's house. You don't have to tell them, oh, I'm going to have to go in and expose your network, and you have to do any of that. Plug it in, it automatically will connect. Um, and uh, But if you are going to be using a monitoring company that needs to have that access back to do talk down, so they can talk down out of our speaker output, um, be able to share that data back and forth. You do have to open up the secure port and also the RTSP feed, uh, 554.
Anything else that uh, can cover while I'm here? Also, one, one thing I think we'd like to see is, is there anything you'd like to see as far as specific classes? Um, I've done a bunch of videos on all different aspects of setting up things in the CAMAC Hub. We haven't published them yet. I, I, I send them out occasionally if a customer needs help setting up Telegram or which we're going to be having our own uh, app come out that will take the place of Telegram. But, you know, from setting up alerts, uh, masking an area, um, just initially getting the hub going. If there's anything that you uh, maybe would like to see where, let's say we did a weekly class, um, maybe it's you, Stephen, a question and answer class where you can log in and get a chance to, you know, ask a question and maybe it's something that we can actually show you how it's done. Just, uh, just let us know or, um, you know, send that information to business at camac.com. Anything you'd like to see in the future from us as far as webinars or classes, um, other things that could help your business uh, from a training standpoint we are available if you know if you're out in the field um, especially if you're gonna let us know ahead of time I'd probably be the one to do it but if you're out in the field and uh, you're like tomorrow I got a job I just want to make sure things are going you know well I'd like to know that I've got somebody that might I might have you know in my pocket I can dial or get a hold of if I need to um, then that request to business at camac.com and that can get sent in to uh, my, you know, keep a lookout for uh, file. And that way I'll know to be expecting maybe a, a, a call. But we would like to know like, what number would you be calling from? Um, and uh, I can text you back and say, yeah, I'll be available. You know, just send me a text or something like that um, to try to, if we can be a resource for you if you're out in the field. <laughs>